We will discuss about mitochondria. Mitochondria were first of all observed uh, by Kolikar in 1818 in muscle cells of insects as granules and later on Fleming in 1882. Altman, one scientist who named nucleic acid, he gave the term bioblast for mitochondria. And the term mitochondria which you know was were given by Benda in 1897. Benda in 1897. Now, if we go through the section of the mitochondria, what we see in the mitochondria? It is also a double membrane bound organelle. This is outer membrane, then this is inner membrane. And in between them, there is a space. It is called, this is called outer chamber. And this is inner chamber. If we see the inner chamber of mitochondria, which is uh, folded into folded structures, and which looks like finger-like called Christi. And inside the Christi, so many structures are there. But before that, let me go to another thing. Where do we get mitochondria? Before going to the structure, mitochondria we get in all types of eukaryotic cells. But they are absent in prokaryotic cells like bacteria, then blue-green algae, then <coughs> actinomycetes, mycoplasma, etc. And mitochondria, how it looks like actually? It looks like filamentous, pedicle or sausage type structure, this is a sausage type structure. So if we go through the structure of mitochondria, then we see two membranes are there. One is called outer membrane and one is called inner membrane. In outer, just in outer membrane, inside the outer membrane, there is the outer chamber. And then inner chamber, which is a folded structure, which looks like finger-like structures that we call Christi. And in the inner chamber, uh, along with the crystal we get mitochondrial matrix. The key, if we go through the structure, I told you that mitochondrial matrix and in the matrix the, the Christi remains uh, suspended and what is there in Christi? If we go through the alpha structure of Christi, then we will see that it contains elementary particles. Elementary particles, elementary particles has uh, three main structures. One is called head or F1, then stock, then base or F0. Three parts are there. In, uh, I mean, inside the crystal, we see first one is the major component is elementary particles or oxisomes, also we call it elementary particles. Particles or oxisomes or subunits of Fernand Ridge and Moran because they have discovered it. So elementary particles consist of three main parts, head or F1 part, stock, base or F0, which is rich in ATP enzyme and which is responsible for synthesis of ATP. Apart from this, this, this is F1, I said this is stock, then this is, apart from this, the Christi also contains bilayer lipid molecules. These are the bilayer lipid molecules. These are the bilayer lipid molecules, then respiratory chain of a respiratory chain enzymes, this and this and this, respiratory chain enzymes, then layer of proteins. So these are the things that there. Once again, I like to remind you that if you go through the alpha structure of Christi, you will get elementary particles or oxisomes or units of subunits of Fernandez and Moran, which consists of elementary particles, consists of three parts, head or F1, stock, then base or F0 which uh, reach in ATPase and are responsible for ATP synthesis. Apart from that, it contains bilayer lipid molecules. Here also, here also bilayer lipid molecules. Then respiratory chain enzymes, then layer of proteins. Here also, here also. So these are about the structure of mitochondria. Once again, I would like to remind you that mitochondria having two membranes like the other cell organelles and the space between inner and outer mitochondria is called perimitochondrial space. And in the just after inner membrane, there is outer chamber of uh, just uh, after I uh, mean outer membrane, there is outer chamber. Then this is the inner chamber which consists of finger like projections called Christi and within which mitochondrial matrix remains suspended. Then I told you about the alpha structure of Christi. There we can get what we get elementary particles or oxisomes or Fernandes, or subunits of Fernandes and Moran. Then respiratory chain enzyme, these are the respiratory chain enzyme, then the layer of proteins and bilayer lipid molecules. 
and elementary particles are rich in ATPase and are responsible for synthesis of ATP. Let us talk about the function of mitochondria. Mitochondria, all of you know, they are the sites of aerobic respiration, means they are responsible for carrying out aerobic respiration. If mitochondria is not there in a cell, there will be no aerobic respiration. Then they are called powerhouse of the cell that we know from class 6, 7, because they generate energy which compound ATP by oxidation of food, means carbohydrate, protein, fat, whatever it is. Then they synthesize a number of amino acids, steroids and cytochrome pigments. Then mitochondria can also store and release calcium ions as and when required by the cell. So these are the prominent functions of mitochondria. Then let us go to another important point that why mitochondria is called semi-autonomous organism. Two cell organisms are there, cytoplasmic organisms are there, which are called semi-autonomous. One is called chloroplast and another one is called mitochondria. So why they are called my they are called semi-autonomous organisms because they have certain degree of autonomy in them. They can carry out some functions like first one, I can say that they have their own DNA molecule which can replicate independently, means which can synthesize independently. Then this mitochondrial DNA produces its own mRNA, tRNA and rRNA which are required for protein synthesis. Then mitochondria possesses their own ribosomes called mitoribosomes and all of you know what is the function of ribosome. They carry out the function of protein synthesis. Then New mitochondria developed by division or by binary division of the pre-existing mitochondria. So these are the reasons why you call mitochondria semi-autonomous organisms. Once again, I am repeating, they have their own DNA which can replicate or synthesize independently. Then mitochondrial DNA produces own mRNA, tRNA and RNA which are required for protein synthesis. Mitochondria possesses their own ribosomes called mitoribosomes. All of we know that function of ribosome is protein synthesis. So mitochondria also can have a for protein synthesis. Then, Mitochondria can develop, new mitochondria can develop by cell division or by we can call it binary fusion of the pre-existing mitochondria. So all this suggests that mitochondria is a semi-autonomous organism. Let us talk about the difference between mitochondria and chloroplast. This also comes in the exam. First thing is that, first difference you can say that mitochondria, where do you get mitochondria or what is the color? Mitochondria is a colorless cell organism. First point you can write. Colorless cell organelle having no color. Colorless cell organelle. Colorless cell organelle, they are green colored. Green colored cell organelles. Organelles. Then, where do you get mitochondria? We get mitochondria in all cells which perform aerobic respiration. Which performs aerobic respiration. And where we get chloroplast, we get chloroplast in all plants and some photosynthetic protein. Photosynthetic protein, Euclina, I think you know it. So, first thing is I said mitochondria is colorless cell organism and chloroplast are green colored cell organism. Then, mitochondria perform aerobic respiration. I mean, uh, we find mitochondria in all cells that perform aerobic respiration and we get chloroplast in all plants and some photosynthetic protein. Then another important point, if we go through the inner structure of mitochondria, we have seen that the inner membrane of mitochondria is folded into finger-like projections called Christi. Uh, folded into finger-like projections called Christi means Christi are there. And in case of chloroplast, the inner membrane of chloroplast possesses some coin like structures or disc like structures called thylakoids. Then, another important difference mitochondria brings about breakdown of food materials to release energy. Breakdown of food materials to release energy, that is why we call them catabolic cell organelles. And chloroplast on the other hand utilizes the carbon dioxide, water and all these to produce food. Means they store energy or food and they release energy by breakdown of food. Another important point is mitochondria is involved in cellular respiration so they consume oxygen. And chloroplast consumes carbon dioxide to bring about photosynthesis. So these are few of the differences between mitochondria and chloroplast. So with this your 
uh, mitochondria is over, now we shall switch over to Golgi complex. This is the structure of Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus or Golgi bodies were first of all observed by Camillo Golgi. C A M I double L O Camillo Golgi in 1898 in nerve cell of owl and cat. And actually, he did not find any name, and ultimately, his name came as uh, I mean, as the name of the Golgi complex or Golgi apparatus. This Golgi complex or Golgi apparatus, also called dictyosomes, are found in all eukaryotic cells except human RBC and sieve tube of plants. They are also absent in sperm cells of bryophytes and pteridophytes, and they are also absent in prokaryotic cells. I repeat. Golgi complex or Golgi apparatus are found in all eukaryotic cells except mammalian RBC and sieve tube of plants and sperm cells of bryophytes and pteridophytes. They are also absent in prokaryotic cells. Otherwise, they are found in all eukaryotic cells. Now, this Golgi complex, like endoplasmic reticulum, it consists of actually in endoplasmic reticulum you've got three structural components: cisterni, vesicles, and tubules. Here. Golgi complex consists of four structural components. One is called cisterni, one is called vesicles, one is called tubules, and another one is called vesicles, which was not there in case of uh, uh, your endoplasmic reticulum. So these are the structural components, and we don't need to describe them because their structural components are structural, I mean components or the basic structures are same. Like your endoplasm, only that they do not have protein in the cisterni. Now this Golgi complex has got two phases. One is called trans phase and one is called cis phase. Concave phase is called trans phase and convex phase is called cis phase, although it is not pointed here. Anyway, this Golgi complex in your Examination, you may get another term that uh, what is what is dictyosome or what are dictyosomes? The dictyosomes means Golgi complex of plant cells and lower invertebrates that we are called, we call them dictyosomes. So I repeat, Golgi complex of plant cells and lower invertebrates are called dictyosomes. Now, Golgi complex function is important or who discovered Golgi complex? Now we are going to the function of the Golgi complex. The first function is secretion. You see, each cell organism has got prominent function, nucleus for synthesis of say, DNA and other things, mitochondria for uh, uh, formation of energy, means generation of energy, ribosomes for protein synthesis, then Golgi complex also, the main function of Golgi complex is secretion. They are the chief secretory component of the cells and they secrete enzymes, hormones, mucus, etc. Then synthesis of carbohydrates. Golgi complex synthesis the simple carbohydrates like galactose and complex carbohydrates like cellulose, hemisoclose and others. Then formation of lysosome. Lysosome we have come across. So Christi, I told you already, Christi of Golgi complex forms the primary lysosome. That is the first form lysosome. Then acrosome formation. Sperm is having a cap-like structure. So if, we, if you have seen the structure of sperm, uh, it looks like this. The structure is in the head of this one, it looks like this, and there is a structure called cap like structure called acrosome. This acrosome is formed by the Golgi complex. This acrosome contains different enzymes which is required for uh, dissolving the egg membrane during fertilization. So, I, once again, I am repeating that acrosome of sperm is formed by Golgi complex. Golgi complex gives us to acrosome in animal sperm. This is the acrosome, that is the cap of this sperm. Then, formation of plasma membrane. And cell wall also can, we can say that. Plasma membrane, all of you know, that covers the protoplasm, then above that there is cell wall. So basically, cell Golgi complex forms plasma membrane and cell wall. Plasma membrane and cell wall. And another thing, during another important function we can write there, cell plate formation. Cell plate formation. Cell plate is a structure that we see in uh, plant cell. And during cytokinesis, it develops, it just separates the uh, cell into two daughter cells. That is called cell plate. So, we will discuss uh, later on. Suppose this is a cell, 
say, containing diesel dichromosomes. And before cytokinesis or cell division, a structure will develop in the middle. This is called cell plate, which will ultimately go in the corner of the cell wall and ultimately divide the cell into cells. This structure is called cell plate, which develops in the middle. This is formed by the complex. So, with this, our uh, today's I mean, uh, cell organs are over. Next day, little bit is left. I will take in video conference with WebEx, with your Google Meet. I will give you information in time. Thank you very much.